My name is Chris O'Leary and I'm a survivor of the Catholic sex abuse crisis. In the late 70s and the early 80s at the Church of the Immaculata in Richmond Heights, Missouri, a suburb of St. Louis, just up the hill from the Galleria for those folks who know St. Louis, I was sexually exploited, abused, assaulted, and raped. Uh, by Father Leroy Valentine. Abuse that was witnessed, at least in part, by then Father, now Cardinal Timothy Dolan. And then things got really bad. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is because Cardinal Dolan's gonna speak at the Republican National Convention in just a couple hours, and that has me extremely upset for obvious reasons, and I wanted to put my thoughts down on the absurdity, the tragedy of Dolan speaking tonight at the RNC, especially given the RNC and the Republican Party's embrace of the QAnon scam. Uh, why, if the Republican Party is in the president and President Trump are waging a secret war against child sexual abuse, why would they have? Timothy Cardell Dolan, a man who turned a blind eye to the sexual abuse of children at Immaculata, why would they have him speak at the Republican National Convention? It's just, it doesn't make any sense. But this has been a difficult period for me, both for that reason and for a couple, a couple of other reasons related to turnover within the Archdiocese of St. Louis. So, as I mentioned, Cardinal Dolan, when he was at Immaculata, when he was just Father Dolan, he saw at least some of our sexual abuse by Father Leroy Valentine. Dolan saw the same, if not worse, behavior as a bunch of the moms who saw stuff and who went to our principal, Sister, Hel Sister Helen, uh, and expressed concerns about Father Valentine. Cardinal Dolan, then Father Dolan, saw the same thing, if not worse, because, because Dolan and Valentine lived and worked together at Immaculata in St. Louis. Uh, they lived, you know, th their rooms were right next to, each to, next to each other in the rectory at, at Immaculata. Dolan was around when Valentine was having us over for pizza parties and to wrestle in the basement and to do other things like, you know, trying out for plays, those kinds of things. Dolan saw some of, at least some of what Valentine was doing in terms of testing, grooming, and some levels of sexual abuse, such as when, when Valentine would take me and others up to his room for haircuts. Dolan would be around, and one of the reasons why I didn't think it was a bigger deal is because Dolan didn't act like it was a bigger deal. But again, some people have told me, oh, Dolan just didn't know what he was seeing. Well, the moms at Immaculata saw the same behavior, and they complained to Sister Helen, who complained to Monsignor Flavin, and Dolan saw worse stuff, more suspicious stuff. Uh, in terms of the wrestling stuff that happened within the, the rectory at Immaculata. And nothing, nothing happened. And to get to Archbishop Carlson, who is now leaving the Archdiocese of St. Louis, uh, he's being replaced by Archbishop Rosansky, and I want to touch on both of them. Uh, I've gone to Archbishop Carlson with all these allegations, uh, with my story, I met with Archbishop Carlson, Carlson March 26, 2019, told him uh, what was going on, what had happened at Immaculata, and what the Archdiocese of St. Louis has done to me in terms of the abuse of the abused and the smear campaign that they're running against me, the false allegations of terroristic threats that they've made to the Shrewsbury police. I informed Arch Archbishop Carlson about those allegations and asked him to end the smear campaign uh, and he hasn't. So one of the things that Archbishop Rosansky can do is to end 
to call off the dogs, to end the smear campaign, to stop the allegations against me, to try to silence me. Obviously, you're not going to silence me. Why is the Archdiocese of St. Louis doing this? Because they're trying to protect Dolan, who is viewed as papable, which is popable, pope material. And, and Dolan is, is at the present running for pope, which isn't how it works, but he's running for it anyway. He thinks he's enough of a narcissist to think that he's pope material. But so I'm rather delighted by the departure of Archbishop Carlson uh, because Carlson did nothing to live up to the words of the Pope, to the promises that the Pope made in Vos Estes, Lux Mundi, the law the Pope passed 14 months ago. The Archdiocese of St. Louis does nothing to help survivors. The only thing they will do is if you don't already have a therapist, they will give you the name of a therapist, but they won't pay for anything. And even getting the name of a therapist in this day and age isn't that difficult. It's not the difficult part. The hard part is paying for therapy. That's why I'm not in therapy right now, because I can't afford it. And the Archdiocese of St. Louis won't help me. So to Archbishop Carlson, I say good riddance. You know, he never did anything to help me. It was the policy of the Archdiocese of St. Louis under Archbishop Carlson not, to not help me. And I'd call on Archbishop Rosansky and, you know, I'll be out front of the Cathedral Basilica during his installation. I hope he comes and talks to me. I'd like to talk to him otherwise, you know, meet with him and talk to him and explain what's going on within St. Louis. And my message is really simple. Live up to the promise that was made in, by the Pope in Vos Estes. Vos Estes was the de facto survivor's bill of rights that the Pope enacted 14 months ago. Uh, but the Archdiocese of St. Louis is an open defiance of the Pope. It will not enforce or comply with Vos Estes. Now, I have some concerns that that's a problem with the Pope because it seems like the Pope won't enforce Vos Estes. He passed the law, but he won't enforce it. I don't know why, but that's a, that's a whole other thing. I've made multiple appeals to the Pope and to the Vatican to let them know that the Archdiocese of St. Louis is in violation of Vos Estes, and I've never heard any replies. I did get an, an, a letter from Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston who said, who told me that he was going to place a letter on the desk of the Pope in September 2019, but nothing ever came of that. So in St. Louis, you've got you've got this cover-up that's that I assume is geared at protecting Dolan, who is seen as papable. The cover-up includes the former Attorney General of Missouri, Senate now Senator Josh Hawley, who did nothing to investigate the Archdiocese of St. Louis current Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt, who did a, did a cursory, perfunctory investigation such that I met with them once in February, they, were, they weren't interested. Holly's team never met with me. Uh, I did meet with Eric Schmidt's team a second time in July and basically told them where the, you know, metaphorically where the bodies are buried, although people are dead as a result of the abuse. And within a couple of weeks, Eric Schmidt, Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt, shut down that investigation. I assume to protect his Catholic Archdiocese of St. Louis, to protect Cardinal Dolan. Uh, everybody is trying to protect everybody. It's St. Louis, to, to put it in terms that you may have heard of, St. Louis is, is spotlight era Boston, but worse because you've got these massive cover-ups that the Missouri Attorney General's office is involved in and that the press is involved in. KMOV, KSDK, KMOX are involved in the cover-up of the misdeeds of Cardinal Dolan. Again, they're trying to protect him. And it's just the fact that Cardinal Dolan is speaking tonight at the Republican National Convention is just horrible in the extreme. It's hard for me to express how difficult it is for me knowing that a man who turned a blind eye to the sexual abuse of others and me. And if he had acted when he saw the sexual abuse of others, I never would have been abused. To think that that same Cardinal Dolan is speaking tonight at the Republican National Convention is stunning beyond words. End of Satan. <laughs>